In the beginning of the film, it is said that in the 20th century, scientists have succeeded in cloning animals. But when scientists try to clone humans, many fundamentalists get angry and protest against human cloning. The government passes a law called the Sixth Day, which bans human cloning. After that, a rugby match is being shown, and during the match, a player named Johnny is badly injured. He is being taken to the hospital in an ambulance. The man next to him tells his boss that Johnny has sustained a serious injury that will keep him out of the match. The man is then told to kill Johnny so that his clone can be created. We then see that Adam Gibson, a charter pilot by profession, has a birthday and is living a happy life with his wife Natalie and daughter Clara. Clara tells Adam that she wants a Sam Pale doll that looks exactly like a girl. Adam doesn't like all of these things, but he can't refuse Clara. Adam arrives at his workplace, where he is delighted to see a modern remote control helicopter. With his co-pilot and good friend Hank Morgan, he then takes some young men to an icy mountain for snow skating. Coming back, Adam is controlling another helicopter from his helicopter with a modern remote control. When they both get back, two men are waiting to perform their blood test and an eye scan under security policies as they have to escort a prominent businessman, Michael Drucker, CEO of Replacement Technologies, to the snowy mountain. Adam gets a call from Natalie and she tells him that Oliver, their dog, got sick. The doctor checked and said that he had a fatal infection, which is why the doctors put Oliver to sleep forever. Natalie goes on to say that she wants to repet Oliver because she doesn't want Clara to be sad. Adam forbids Natalie from doing so, but she doesn't listen and hangs up. Adam is forced to clone Oliver. He asks Hank to take Michael Drucker to the same snowy hills. Adam goes to the repet shop, but instead of cloning Oliver, he buys a Sam Pale doll at Clara's request. Hank, on the other hand, leads Michael to his destination, but then Trip, a fundamentalist, comes with a gun and kills them all. Adam arrives home with the doll and is surprised to see Oliver there. Then he realizes that Natalie must have cloned Oliver. As he approaches the house, he hears the voice of happy birthday wishes from inside. Instead of opening the door, he peeks through the window to see Adam Gibson smiling with his family. As he starts to open the door, clone company agents Talia Ellsworth and Vincent approach him and try to take him away. Adam does not go with them but steals his own car and runs away. Talia also gets into his car. Talia's team chases Adam in their car. T. Wiley shoots Adam's car. As the chase continues, Adam asks Talia why they want to kill him. She explains that his company accidentally cloned him, and since two Adams cannot exist, he must die. When P. Wiley's car approaches Adam, he shoots at him again, but this time it hits Talia instead of Adam, and she falls out of the car and dies. P. Wiley also falls from the car and is crushed under the cars. Talia's supervisor, Robert Marshall, calls to inform someone that Talia and P. Wiley are to be cloned. Now we see Dr. Griffin Weir talking about his pet cloning at a party, and surprisingly, Michael Drucker, who died that morning, is also standing perfectly. Michael convinces people about human cloning because he is illegally doing so. Adam, on the other hand, escapes from Vincent and Robert. He reaches the police station and wants to register and fur against his clone, but the police do not listen to him. The police say that he reported his car missing a few hours ago, and they lock him up in a cell. Dr. Griffin creates clones of Talia and P. Wiley in the lab. Robert Marshall and Vincent are also present in the lab. They find out that Adam is still alive and at the police station. Talia is very angry and says that she will kill Adam herself. They leave to capture him. At the police station, Adam runs away when he sees Talia and her friends. Outside the building, he bumps into P. Wiley. Adam is very surprised to see him. He realizes that P. Wiley is a clone. Adam kills him again and goes to Hank's house. Hank, who arrived home tired not long ago, is spending time with his virtual girlfriend. We also find out that Hank is a clone because he died on the snowy hill in the morning. But Adam doesn't know this, and Hank himself doesn't know that Hank is a clone. Adam tells Hank the whole story, but he doesn't believe him. He takes Hank to his house, where Adam's clone is working in the garage. Adam intends to destroy his doppelganger, but when he sees the opportunity to do so, he is unable to do so. He comes to Hank and tells him that he can't kill himself. Then Clara arrives. Clone Adam is preoccupied with Natalie, so the real Adam takes Clara and leaves her in her room. Then Robert and Vincent arrive, and Adam cleverly chases them away. Before that, the clone Adam senses their presence, and they come out. Hank and Adam get back to the apartment when the same man, Trip, comes in and kills Hank again. Adam runs after him and catches him. Trip tells Adam that Michael Drucker is secretly cloning humans. In the morning, he went to kill him, but Hank was accidentally shot. Adam is a bit confused to hear that Adam's friend was a clone. Just then, Robert's car arrives, and Trip tells Adam that if they get their hands on him, they will read his mind. So, he ends up shooting himself with Adam's gun. Adam leaves him there and tries to hide somewhere to save his life. Talia and Robert shoot Adam, but he survives. Adam shoots Talia's hands and escapes in their car, taking her thumb with him. In the next scene, we see Dr. Griffin, who is very sad because of his wife Catherine's ill health. 
Dr. Griffin wants to take Catherine to his lab, but she refuses. She tells him that Catherine died five years ago and that the few years she lived longer were because of Griffin, but she doesn't want to live anymore and has accepted her death. She wants to die, and Griffin respects Catherine's wish. Dr. Griffin returns to his lab and examines Catherine's medical record, discovering that she had liver cancer, but he doesn't know how it got into her clone DNA. We then see Adam enter Michael's company with the aid of Talia's severed thumb, also carrying an icebox. When security starts checking the box, Adam doesn't object, instead saying it contains a human organ containing a deadly virus. Hearing this, the guard hands it back to Adam without checking the box. Intending to get to the lab, Adam pulls his gun out of the icebox and proceeds to access the doors. Just then, when Talia enters the facility with her colleagues, she is surprised to see on the computer that she has already entered. Everyone suspects that Adam has broken into the lab. Robert asks to remove Talia's fingerprint from the system so Adam can no longer open doors. Adam forces a guard to open the door at gunpoint and reaches Dr. Griffin. Adam asks Dr. Griffin why he is cloning humans, to which he replies that a fundamentalist killed Michael Drucker and his colleagues. He got the news that Adam was killed along with Hank, so he made a clone of Adam. But because Adam was alive, it all became difficult because cloning is illegal. Clone has no legal rights whatsoever. A clone can't build assets and can't take shares, and that's why Michael Drucker has kept his death a secret, because if it gets out, Michael will be ruined in every way. He will have nothing left. All this is no less than a surprise for Adam. He escapes with Dr. Griffin's help, not forgetting Michael's syndrome. Michael's syndrome is missing, and he is furious when he learns that Adam has taken it because it contains the memory of Michael, who got shot and died. He asks his team to kidnap Adam's daughter and wife. At Clara's school function, clones Adam and Natalie are present along with the rest of the parents. When the show starts on stage, Natalie doesn't see Clara, so she goes out of the room to see her. While searching for Clara, she notices some dangerous dogs surrounding her, and then Vincent and Talia arrive. They are controlling the dogs, they threaten Clara and Natalie to go with them. Both of them are taken from there. Clone Adam tries to save his wife and daughter, but they fire on him. Clone Adam doesn't understand anything, so he calls the police, but the police aren't listening. The real Adam arrives at Clara's school, and when he sees his lookalike, he punches him. Then, when the clone Adam regains consciousness, the real Adam tells him the whole story. Clara and Natalie are also family to clone Adam, so he sets out to save them both. The real Adam has devised a strategy to save their family. Now we see that Dr. Griffin comes to Michael with some files and tells him that all the clones he made have cancer in their DNA. He asks why Michael did this. He replies that if a clone rebels against him, he will not be able to succeed if his life is short. Griffin tells him that Catherine is dead, and Michael says that they will clone Catherine again. Griffin insists that his wife didn't want it, so he won't do it, and he won't support him anymore. Hearing this, Michael becomes angry and tells him that he will kill him to erase his memory and start all over again with his wife and her clone. Saying this, Michael shoots and kills Griffin. Adam, on the other hand, arrives at the replacement technologies building by helicopter and proceeds to shoot all the security cameras in his path with a gun. But Michael's men capture Adam and bring him to the lab. He asks Michael about his family, to which he shows Adam his wife and daughter on a screen. Robert tells him that they didn't get the disc from Adam. Michael asks Adam about his memory syndrome, but he tells him that he knew he would double-cross him. Therefore, he has given Michael's syndrome to his doppelganger. Hearing this, Michael laughs and tells him that it is not him, but the one he thinks is his doppelganger is the real Adam. At Michael's behest, Talia comes to him and shows the inside of her eye. There are four dots, which means that Talia has been cloned four times. Michael tells Adam to check it out as well. When Adam checks, there is a dot inside his eye. Michael tells him that they are all on the same boat. If the real Adam gives the syndrome clip of him shooting dead to the authorities, they're all doomed. But Adam doesn't agree at all, so they forcefully check his memory, during which the clone Adam gives the real Adam a syndrome disc and goes somewhere. Then Michael sees both Adams in the helicopter's glass rucksack, meaning they already knew and tricked his memory. Now Michael's men hunt down the real Adam, who has come to rescue his wife and daughter. He bombards the oxygen cylinders and cuts the building's power, leaving it dark. Taking the opportunity, clone Adam made Michael his shield, but Wiley shot him, hitting Michael instead of Adam. Adam escapes by jumping from the window. The real Adam takes his wife and daughter from there, puts them in a helicopter, and takes them to a safe place. He tells them that he has to help a friend of his, Adam, return again so that he can help his clone. Michael prepares his clones again by creating a new syndrome. Clone Adam hides in a water tank among the many clones being bred. Talia realizes that Adam is in the tank, so she shoots him, which breaks the glass of the tank, and all the water flows out, incapacitating all the clones with it. Michael's clone is only 84% complete. Michael doesn't want to die, so he injects his memory into the incomplete clone. But his clone doesn't wake up, leaving Michael disappointed. Clone Adam, on the other hand, takes Robert's gun and comes to end this story. 
an incomplete clone of Michael wakes up and begins to take his clothes from the injured Michael. Seeing his own merciless attitude toward himself, he is stunned. Then clone Adam arrives there, and Michael's new clone tells him that he can save him. The clone Adam does not understand, so he tells him that he has given the clone's life a short-term span. He soon resumes work with this setup, but clone Adam shoots and destroys all the syndrome and computers. Michael tells him that he is giving him a chance to live a perfect life. Hearing this, clone Adam shows him his reflection in the mirror. Michael is sure he will fax himself, but Adam replies that it's all over now. An injured Michael gets up and attacks clone Adam, then both Michaels fight him. The clone Adam overpowers both. He then detonates the bomb planted by the real Adam and runs upstairs. The real Adam comes there with a helicopter. An incomplete clone of Michael, who is still alive, arrives and shoots clone Adam, wounding him in the leg. The real Adam comes down to help him and uses his remote control to kill Michael with another helicopter, but he jumps onto the glass ceiling. He escapes from the helicopter's propellers, but the glass roof shatters and he falls to his death. The real Adam takes the clone Adam out of there safely. He tells him that he has really given proof of humanity. Natalie and Clara are his family too. He wants to go on a cruise, so the real Adam gives him his helicopter and also allows him to visit his family. Clone Adam took great risks for his family and saved them. The original Adam thanks him. After meeting Natalie and Clara, he gets away from them in a helicopter.